catch this thing in action here. That'll be the bottom screen. The wheel's going forward. The wheel's going backwards. Left turn. Right turn. So I built this toolbar on the front so I can build an atta uh, build attachments for the front of it. I've got uh, ideas for a gas-powered hedge trimmer and also a string trimmer going the front. And of course it's detachable. And it also raises and lowers The electronics are housed in an airtight, watertight NEMA enclosure. It has a single key switch on the top, a 24 volt battery indicator, and a K&N push-in style air filter for intake for the fresh air. On the sides, I bored two holes on either, well, one on either side uh, for exhaust for the internal fans. Uh, it's got a grill and a filter on top of the, um, behind the grill. This is the back side of the lid. The black rubber piece on the top is for the fresh air intake. That's a one and a quarter inch uh, hole. Uh, this thing just snaps in and out. It's airtight also. Uh, you see two, the key switch and a voltage indicator and the wires that run down into the rest of the box. Let's go over those. All wiring entering and exiting the enclosure goes through a three quarter inch gland nut. When you tighten up a gland nut, it cinches the cabling uh, tight against each other. You still have spaces where it's not exactly airtight. So what it is, I pushed in uh, foam air plugs to fill up the, the larger gaps. I have a Sabertooth 2x32 motor controller and a Cytron dual 10 amp motor controller RC. Power coming in to the box for the negative goes immediately to the junction box or the junction terminal and the positive goes to the input side of a 120 amp circuit breaker. It exits out to the key switch, comes back down to the other side to, for the uh, 24 volt positive. This terminal block has half inch long spacing so it makes it real easy to you know attach wires without uh, having to wor worry about running out of space. <clears throat> There's a 24 volt to 5 volt DC converter, which powers the FlySky receiver. And in this configuration, you do not need the positive and negative on either one of the motor controllers. You just need the signal wires, in this case, S1 and S2 and channel one. To turn the on and off the motor controller, which gives you a instantaneous control of the motion of the mower, I put in a 120 amp relay that is powered by an Electhawk 5 volt 8 amp switch, which is connected to switch A on my transmitter. So I can turn on, on and off switch A and it'll energize or de-energize this circuit. This is put in for safety reasons. Uh, and you get a situation where the robot will go out of control. All right, go ahead. You can hit switch A and absolutely kill the robot. Also needed in here is a 5 amp diode that goes from the positive to the positive on the battery for regenerative power so you don't damage the motor controller when you're uh, pushing the bot back and forth. In an effort to mitigate the erratic behavior of the Sabertooth controller when it goes into a low, low voltage situation where it has to reboot, I set dip switch 6 to off. What this does is it uses an internal map for the calibration and doesn't rely on the auto calibrate when it boots up. This also kills the failsafe on the Sabertooth. So in order to do that you have to have an additional circuitry to kill it when uh, you lose signal. So what I did is on my FlySky transmitter, I set failsafe for the channel just using the, to power the relay uh, to the off position, or I'm sorry, to the failsafe on position. And when it goes out of range, 
it goes about two foot and it stops. I ran this for about two hours plus in this configuration. I had a few times that it uh, did an overcurrent and rebooted, but it just, just sit there for a second and then I had complete control over joysticks again. So I, I believe I've eliminated this problem. The two fans exhaust air from inside the enclosure. I mounted the Fly Sky receiver on the side of the enclosure with double-sided Velcro tape. This makes it easy to plug and unplug signal wires. All wiring outside of the controller box is run in a wire loom to protect the wiring. For power distribution to the motors, I found these connectors on Amazon. The connection space inside is for 8 gauge wires. We've got uh, 10 gauge coming into the uh, controller wiring set on the side and it's split up into the 12 gauge that actually feed the motors. This connections or these connections make it uh, really easy to connect and disconnect the uh, motors in case you've got to repair or replace them. I had to install this exhaust diverter on the Honda mower engine in order to vert the exhaust out to the front so it doesn't affect uh, our blow exhaust onto the wiring on the right side of the mower.